how to set up your dirt bike. We are all different shapes and sizes. We will all use our bikes in different ways. So here's a comprehensive guide to setting up your dirt bike. We encourage you to do the free mods first, then ride your bike for a while before you spend money. It is easy to spend a lot of cash on mods that will barely make a difference. Learning to ride better will always make the biggest difference. Let's start with ergonomics. This is the relationship between your levers, handlebars, seat and foot pegs. First, your hand levers. These should be horizontal or slightly angled down. Some riders angle these at 45 degrees, but it only encourages bad body positioning. If you have long fingers, consider moving the levers in so you have more leverage with your fingers. If you have short fingers, you can bite this style of lever so it's easier to reach. You can use plumbing tape or electrical tape under your lever mounts so the levers will spin in an accident instead of breaking. And or bar positioning. Draw a line from your forks to your hand grips. The more the bars are angled toward the rider, the more inline stability you will have at speed. When the hand grips are actually in line with the forks, the steering is quicker, and this is the position we encourage for enduro riding. It also gives tall riders more room on the bike. Hand grips. It's a good idea to put some wire around your hand grips to stop water getting in or they can suddenly start rotating as you ride. Rear brake positioning. The default position is to have your rear brake lever horizontal with the foot peg or slightly lower. Riders who sit most of the time often set the angle very low but it's difficult to use that lever properly when standing. A short rider, you can shave some foam from your seat to make it lower. You can increase the sag on your rear shock and slide the forks up through the triple clamps. You can buy a different linkage that will lower the rear or actually get your suspension professionally lowered. See our short rider setup video for lots of other tips. Are you a tall rider? Roll your bars forward. You can use high bend bars, bar risers. You can pad the seat higher and get foot pegs like the fast way that drop the foot pegs down and back. See our tall rider setup video for more information. Air pressures. There is endless debate about this. If you are using the normal thin tubes that come with new dirt bikes, here is a rough guideline. Fine tuning this will depend on your weight, your type of tyre and if you are using heavy duty tubes. Apart from heavy duty tubes, you can also use the tubeless system or mooses. Generally speaking, racers and very aggressive riders will benefit from mooses. Tubeless is a handy way to get some of the same benefits but with more adjustability but not quite as bulletproof. See our video comparing tubes, mooses, and the tubeless system. If you do run tubes, make sure you don't tighten these bolts. If your tire moves, you won't notice your tube is moving and it can suddenly be ripped apart. Suspension. This is an endlessly debated topic. Some riders insist you must spend a fortune getting it custom tuned. We believe the suspension on most dirt bikes is pretty good nowadays and you won't need to spend a lot of money unless you are very heavy, very light or you are a very talented rider pushing the bike hard. It is important to set the sag correctly and dial your clickers in. If that's not enough, look into correct spring weights and possibly a revalve. See our video, do I really need suspension mods? Bike protection. Easy to spend $2,000 and make your bike much heavier. Skid plates, disc guards, linkage protectors, full wrap hand guards, side case covers, crankcase savers, swing arm covers, exhaust guards, frame guards, radiator guards, heavy duty chain guides, speeder protectors, fender braces, and master cylinder guards. Do your research and see which items you really need. For example, does a two-stroke bike really need this heavy, expensive guard? Would a much lighter carbon fibre guard be enough? Some riders have no guard, but simply repair the pipe every time it is dinged. And remember, even a big dent often doesn't affect engine power much, if at all. Another example is hand guards. We recently did a video about full wrap hand guards versus the plastic flag style ones on most new dirt bikes. 
Each has its pros and cons. See a video about which will suit you best. Exhausts and power mods. One of the sillier mods tends to be getting louder exhausts. The majority of exhausts are designed quite well on most dirt bikes. Aftermarket guys will make ridiculous claims about power increases, but often the dyno test will only show a 2 to 4% improvement. In most cases, you are far better off working on your riding technique. The same goes for most power mods. Occasionally a bike won't be running well from the factory, such as some of KDM's TPI models or Sherco two-strokes often run too rich. But most of the time you will be spending a lot of money for marginal power increases. Just learn to ride well instead. Tires. Everyday riders obsess about tires way too much. Sure, there are different types, some might suit you a bit better, but your riding skills will make a much bigger difference. <laughs> but you never see anyone obsess over riding skills, sigh. For enduro riders, I believe air pressure makes a bigger difference, especially if you want good traction. Look into heavy duty tubes, soft mooses, or the tubeless system if you want to get obsessive about tyres. Personally, we like old worn out tyres as they force us to ride better. Your toolkit. Every bike comes with one and they don't give you much either. The further you ride from base, the more important it is to take it with you. And as it gets gnarlier and more remote, you will probably want to take extras. See our video for a pile of different ideas. Gearing. Some riders claim small changes in gearing make a huge difference. More experienced riders who use their clutch a lot often don't touch their gearing. But if you are riding much slower or faster terrain than normal, then it's always worth looking at a change. A lighter clutch. As your skills improve, you will use your clutch more and more. If your bike has a heavy clutch pull, there are mods to make it lighter. You can just add washers to lighten the springs or change to lighter springs, use a Midwest clutch lever, or go for the expensive but awesome Clake One Light clutch. See our video for more information. Speaking of clutches, some beginners like to install an auto clutch. Even some experienced riders use these. Many criticise the auto clutch as a crutch, but it can be a very sensible option if you have physical issues with your hands or simply want to make your riding as easy as possible. Another crutch, steg pegs. I always use these to reduce problems with my arms and hands as I get older. Beginner riders also find them useful as it encourages you to get into the right body position. And speaking of crutches, some beginners can benefit from the G2 Throttle Tamer. It gives you much more throttle control at lower revs and takes away that snappy throttle response common with some fuel injected four strokes. A final note, maintaining your bike is an important part of setup. Regularly check your air filter, radiator coolant, brake fluid, chain tension and spoke tension. Check all those bolts and Loctite any that come loose. Do you have any extra tips? I will put them in the pinned first comment of the YouTube video.